may we feel the Father's love, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus, and the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. May the Father, the Son, and the Spirit guide us and lead us now and forever. And may we hear the word of the story of Christmas once again in a fresh way. That is my prayer. My first question is, what is a promise? Now, now really get to it. What is a promise? And if we promise something, what does that say that there is a reason for that promise? Let me see if I said that in a way that you can understand. What I'm saying is if you promise something, there must be a need for that promise or else you wouldn't make that promise. And so when we think about what lies ahead of us as far as our life is concerned, and for some of us we have most of our life, and some of us, we have maybe half of our life, as God wills. And for some of us, we are much closer. But we're all together. You like that, Ruth, right? Yeah. But, we don't, but, but all of us have the same need as far as understanding what is ahead of us in the way that we can understand because of the promise that was given to us. The promise that was given to the prophets of old, and then the promise that came true. Now, when we look at Hebrews, and we study, especially in chapter 10, as we have been doing, it starts off with, first and foremost, that we have a Savior. And since we have a Savior, since we have a Savior, then we can have confidence and endurance and patience because of the promise. Since we have a Savior then, it, it shows uh, what happens as far as our lives are concerned. We are confident because we have a high priest. A high priest who came in the name of Jesus. Jesus is our high priest. And that high priest broke down the wall that separates us from God. And also broke down the wall that encapsulates us, which is sin. Broke it down. And because that is broken, then we live with the hope, and we are people of hope. We live with the hope that indeed our lives are in God's hands. And because they're in God's, lands, in God's hands, the Hebrew writer says, hold fast to the trust. Hold fast to the trust that you have, to the faith that you have been given. And because you have the faith that you've given, the Hebrews also tells us to stir up each other. And Sarah, that was a beautiful way to stir us up. To stir up each other. And stir us up by, by, uh, by our lives and by what we do and how we, how we live out the promise that have been given to us. Today, in Hebrews, the text that we use then says, live this way with confidence, with endurance, and always knowing that the promise is going to come. And the text goes this way. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patience, endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. Then Hebrews, the author of Hebrews, goes to the Old Testament and reads a, or puts together from two different prophets, Isaiah and Habakkuk. And it goes this way. They say, For in just a little while the coming one, that is the promise, will come and not delay. And my righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. Now, we live in a life in which, we live in a world in which there are many that are saying, even though they catch the spirit of Christmas in a very small way, peace and love and kindness, because by natural law we do know that there is an order that, is, that needs to be followed in order for life to have meaning. Life is not just a fortunate accident. A fortunate accident that, you know, everything is just the way uh, the beautiful 
earth and the beautiful heavens that we have, the mountains that speak for, that reach forward almost to the top of the world. All of this is, is not a, just a fortunate accident. It is by God's plan. Nature tells us that. And the scriptures tell us that we have a promise. And the promise is what we celebrate today. So we see in Hebrews... But we are not like the ones who turn away from God to their own destruction. We are faithful ones whose souls will be saved. Whose souls will be saved. Now, when we celebrate Christmas Day, what better way than walking with the shepherds from the field after they have been told, I bring you good tidings of great joy. For unto you this day is born is Christ the Lord. Now, the shepherds were out there in this field and they had the ordinary things that were keeping them busy. They had to be in charge of, of the sheep. They had to put food on the table, perhaps not for their families that were there, but for their families that lived in, in Bethlehem themselves. We don't know exactly what the situation was, but they had a lot of things that were going on. You have a lot of things that are going on. And some of the things you have are just pulling you up because it is a high experience and some of them perhaps are threatening to pull you low. But difficulties are there as they were there for the shepherds and then lo and behold, an angel comes. An angel says to them, for unto you. And so, as they had this great fanfare of, of angels singing and praising God, they go forward to find this babe that was lying there in the manger as it was promised. Now, what was it like for the, for the shepherds to go there? I would say that they went there with great excitement because they had a promise. And the promise that they had been given is that you will find in a manger... Now, we put that manger in, a, in some type of a stable because a manger would be out of place in a house, so it's in a stable. And so we go there with the shepherds. We walk there with the shepherds. Some of them perhaps were young enough that they were running. And then they come to the Christ child, and they come to Mary and Joseph. And we look at Mary and Joseph, and as shepherds are, are, a company, are, are people that are are with the shepherds, we look at Mary and Joseph and the babe. What did Mary and Joseph just go through before that birth? And what were their number one concerns? And what were the promise, what was the promise that they were thinking of? I don't know how your mind works on this, but I would think that Mary and Joseph, one of the things that they really were, were really wondering about at that particular time before the baby was born is, is the baby going to be okay? Joseph, is Mary going to be okay? And so the baby is born and the immediacy of the delivery and what was there is now met with the impossibility by nature, but, the, but what, what was given to us by God's rule, and that is the Christ child. Now, the promise that Mary and Joseph both had been given was that this child was true God and true man. The Father is the Holy Spirit. And Joseph understood that as he held his son, his son that was given to him to take care of, his son that he was the stepfather for, he would now be holding, and he did hold, and Mary as she held. Now the shepherds were there, and listen to the shepherds, because they told Mary and Joseph everything that had happened in the field. Everything that had happened in the field. Now if you're, if you're, if the immediacy of your particular situation right now has you hooked, as it perhaps had the shepherds hooked, you're not thinking about anything except, well, what's, is the meal going to turn out okay? Or, you know, are we, are, is everybody going to be happy around the table? And those are good things. But the immediacy of the time is shattered, as it was shattered for Mary and Joseph, simply by understanding what the shepherds told them. The promise that the shepherds have been given is, you shall go and find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. Unto you a Savior has been born. 
It's something to get excited about. It is something to that by being knowledgeable and by understanding and by seeing what promise, what the promise looked like. That is Jesus Christ Himself. What it meant to Joseph, what it meant to Mary, what it means to us. Now, as we know, one of the words that we find in Luke is that Mary took all of these things and pondered them in her heart. Mary took everything that Jesus was by, by being told by the angel that appeared to her first and by now the angel that appeared to the shepherds and by now the shepherds coming forward and surrounding them and telling them what had happened in the field. And so we have in front of us the promise, the promised Savior. And so we look at what the text says. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. It brings you not only eternal life, which is the most important reward, which is the great reward, but it also brings us the hope of life. And with that hope of life, we live differently. And with that hope of life, we can be an example of the confidence that God gives us. We can have endurance, we can have patience, and we can indeed look and know and acknowledge the promise. Now, I don't know about you, but in my mind, I like to shift gears just a little bit and think about this gift that was given to us and it was found in the manger. You've all been in different situations that are awkward, right? You know, you walk into a dialogue and somebody is saying something, somebody else is rather private, it might be very angry, and here you are and you try to sneak away because it's something that's private and it is emotional and it pulls you in and you don't want to be pulled in. It is kind of awkward. Or maybe it's a celebration. Maybe it's, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's, it's something that, that happens that, you know, you're glad that you're seeing it, but it is so private. It's not bad. It's good. It's so private. It just feels sort of awkward. I think that as we try to understand God's love to us, that one thing we can say about it is that it's awkward love. Now that's really against what most pastors are saying, I think, this morning. They're saying great love, abundant love, wonderful love, and I am saying awkward love. But what is awkward about the love? Here's some words that I like to read. His love never apologizes. It's just there. Awkward love? Yes, for this love, yes, for this love is so striking as it claims no reward, but only gives. It stands alone, it's surrounded by a context, by us, that pales so awkward in comparison. Imagine Jesus himself, God, in a manger, wrapped in simple earthly clothing. Yet in the stable, the difficulties of life disappear. As the love of Christ's child pulls us near, all awkwardness is gone, as we hear, for unto you is born. Christ is here. And as now the shepherds get up to leave, we also get up to leave, praising God and knowing God, and especially indeed by God's grace, we have confidence, we have endurance, we have patience, because we have the promise. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. The prayers we have this morning start and begin with, may our holiday, our Christmas, be an abundant day of, of wonderful love, that we share, not awkwardly, we share it in a way that we know by God's grace we have what we do not deserve. Let me pray for us. Lord, we live in your presence. Uh, we're confident that Christ is in our heart. 
And Lord, if this is just a question and we don't know, we don't know how, if, if you really are real or, or just how you might be, just come to us. Help us be people of hope. We are blessed by you, God, as your son was born and placed in the manger. The day has come, the birthday, the time celebrating that silent night when you, Christ, were born. You have given and you kept the promise. Your gift has taken away our awkwardness. We will remain confident and trust in you. We hear and we believe in the great reward it brings us. Give us patient endurance so that we continue to do God's will and receive all that God has promised. Lord, whether we're on a mountaintop of excitement and joy and just, just really feeling so wonderfully blessed, whether we are there or whether the immediacy of life is the difficulties that maybe have just emerged, whatever that is, strip those away so that we know and feel the awkwardness of your great love. And in that awkwardness, know how not to be awkward as we share and as we bring the confidence that only you can give because of the promise that you have kept. May we trust, may we live in confidence and be faithful as we, as we with the shepherds, Joseph and Mary, looked upon the promise. May we always be able to tell with the love the reason for the hope we have. Justified by your grace through faith, we live as the scriptures teach and are lifted up beyond our limitations, stirring up those you bring into our lives as we wait for our King. Guide us this Christmas so that we celebrate Jesus as our King, our Prophet, our Priest, with love and peace and hope in our heart, stirring up those around us. For those that are in our prayers, for those who are, who are healing, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you, and we, and, we, uh, and we acknowledge your grace and your power. We include in those Kent and Donna, Katie Dick, and Dennis Blouts, and those now that we bring to you silently on our heart. Imagine God in a manger, manger, wrapped in simple earthly clothing. Yet in a stable, the difficulties of life disappear. All as the love of Christ's child pulls us near, all awkwardness is gone, as we hear, for unto you is born, Christ is here. As Christ lived, taught, as he died and as he rose again, as he walked on this earth, even after his death, as he now is in the heavens, sitting on the throne, next to God the Father, we praise and we thank him and we look forward to each and every Christmas day that comes in our lives. We also, as we have the opportunity to say the prayer that Jesus taught us, so would you rise please and say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For those of you that are comfortable with this, please read. Let us read together the theme text. So, do not throw away this... brings to you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. Amen. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. Yes, Lord. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign for you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. And the peace of God to you. Amen.